Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin. So today I'm doing my review of the F Note 5X. This is like the top end of their mid-range line of electronic drums. The company mailed this to me for review and I will be sending it back after the video is over. So let's get some specs out of the way and talk about the sizes of the drums. The kick drum is 16 by 12. The snare is 12 by five. The toms are 10 by seven, 12 by 12 and 13 by 13. If you buy the five series, it comes in white. And if you buy the 5X series, it comes in this matte black. It's got this wood grain sort of look to it. Uh, the only downside is that when the wraps meet, the patterns don't really match and the seam is pretty obvious. Something a little bit interesting to me is that the rims are all this sort of uh, silver gray color and then the rim silencers are also gray. They blend into the drum and don't really stand out. As far as what exact hardware comes in the box, what you're getting are three cymbal stands, one for each crash, one for the ride cymbal, their boom arms, and then finally you get the mount for the high tom and the splash. And you can mount the module to whatever cymbal stand that you want, but you'll probably be mounting it to the hi-hat. Okay, so now let's talk about the performance of the drums and cymbals, starting off with the snare. All the drums seem to have some sort of like three cone design on the inside. This is something that the whole industry is moving towards. Here's a quick test of doing buzz rolls and overall hot spotting performance on the drum. So on the snare, there's also an extra sensor just for side click. This is nice because a lot of times a module will either have a crossover point. They'll make you set manually how hard you have to hit to trigger a rim shot versus a rim click sound because it doesn't know the difference. Or in the case of Roland, they'll have all kinds of tech that makes the pad very heavy so it can sense when your hand is resting on the drum head. Uh, but another approach is just to have a dedicated extra raised side rim just for the cross stick. And that's what they've done here. It's an approach that just kind of works. The only downside is that you will have to use an extra cable to plug into that sensor. The only thing I'll say about this approach is that sometimes you can trick the system. If you're holding onto the stick like this and your fingers hit the drum head before your stick hits the side rim, then you sometimes will hear a drum head hit that's very, very soft. So if you grip the stick more like this, that way your fingers aren't hitting the drum head before your stick hits the rim. Now moving over to the toms, they all perform exceptionally well. They're all two zone, so you get rim and head zones. As far as the high tom, it does shake around a little bit because it is being mounted to a you know 16 inch kick drum. It's not on a separate stand, but the performance is definitely there. Moving over to the floor toms, uh, they also trigger very well. The only downside though, is that I feel like for me, because I'm really tall, I'm about six foot five, the toms down here just don't get high enough for me. It's not a game changer for me. I could go order a couple of extra long legs for these floor toms, but out of the box, they are a little bit short. Here it is compared to a 16 inch converted floor tom that I use on my primary drum set behind me. Now touching on the drum heads, they're all some sort of two ply design. I'm not sure who the manufacturer is, but it's kind of like your standard mesh head, a little bit softer than what you would expect from a two ply rolling mesh head, but not overly, you know, overly soft feeling. And of course you can tune them all with a drum key. I should probably also mention that all the drums appear to have mesh resonant heads as well. So technically, if you ever damage one of the top heads down the road a couple of years from now, you can just swap out the resonant head and keep playing.
Now moving ahead to the kick drum, the sensor design in there is a little bit strange. After I remove the top head, it turns out there are two trigger cones side by side and they both have piezos going to them. I don't know how many other companies do this, I, I've never really seen it before myself, but the triggering result is very good. It stays very, very stable. It comes with a kick drum patch included in case you want to use felt kick drum beaters, which is a very, very nice touch. And it isn't overly bouncy. They have enough foam dampening there. There's no foam dampening on the resonant head so that when you play it, you hear it ring out a lot acoustically. So I would recommend throwing a blanket in there just to make this a little bit more quiet. Because it's 16 inches across, it's raised up on its back legs and a little pedal attachment that goes on the front of the kick drum. The reason why you have to do this on kick drums that are like 16 and 18 inches across is that you wanna have the top of your beater hit the middle of the kick drum. And because it's a little bit shorter, uh, you wanna raise it up so that the levels match. But it would have been nice to see a little cutout like you would see on this Gava kick drum, for example. And this allows the pedal to get a little bit closer to the kick drum. On this kick drum, I found myself having to be very, very careful to get it just close enough so that the kick drum beater felt natural when I was hitting the playing surface, but not too close so that my pedal board was clipping on the rim. All right, so now let's move ahead to the cymbals. The sizes are perfect for the sizes of the drums. It's a good match. 16 inch crashes, you got a splash, which is never included in electronic drums. You've got two piece 14 inch hi-hats on an acoustic stand. You got an 18 inch ride cymbal. I love the sizes of the cymbals. They're also very, very thin. I really like that. All of the crashes, except for the splash, are three zones. So you can get a bell if you wanna sacrifice a cable to make that happen. And speaking of bell zones, I like how the ride cymbal has a decently sized bell zone. Sometimes companies will just make a really small bell zone that can be easy to miss when you're playing sometimes, and that's not a problem with this ride cymbal. Moving over to the hi-hats, these cymbals especially shine when they're already closed, but you push down a little bit harder. That pressure sensitivity when you're pinching them extra closed and hearing the pitch change go up and down is very subtle and very, very accurate. The only times that I've ever tricked these hi-hats is that if the cymbals get kind of like diagonal like that, it sort of trips out the laser sensors on the inside or the light sensors. It's also nice that you can hit these cymbals wherever because they have 360 triggering on them. Now, one little weird thing about these cymbals is that they all have this weird vibrating sound when you hit them. Now, as far as actual things that I wish were slightly different about these cymbals, there's only a handful of things. The first is that the splash has a cable permanently mounted to it that goes to the module. So if the cable goes bad, you kind of have to replace the entire cymbal. Same with the hi-hats. They uh, have one cable design, which is nice because a similar hi-hat to this uh, uses three cables, a power cable and then two other cables for the zones. But unfortunately, this uses a proprietary connection that if it goes bad, you'll have to replace the entire top part of the cymbal. Another thing about these cymbals is that they don't have rotation stopper mechanisms to them, so they can spin from side to side as well as going up and down like that. If the cymbal spins like five or ten times in one direction, that eventually will strain the cables. And if the cables go bad, you have to replace an entire cable snake, not just one individual cable. Now as a quick wrap up about the drums before we move ahead to the module section of the video, you got decent mesh heads, you got a nice looking drum set, all the cymbals perform the way they should, they have a nice design, they all feel good while you're playing on them, and the drum set just kind of works. You don't have to force the module to work with them like another drum set that I previously reviewed on the channel. Okay, so now let's move ahead to a quick walkthrough of the module, and then I'll talk about some of my pros and cons, what I like and don't like about it. So this is the home screen, you can select the kit by just pressing these virtual arrows on screen, you do have to wait all the way for the loading in order to go to the next kit. You can't just go through a bunch of them all at once, which can get a little bit annoying. If we go over here to the menu screen and then kit edit, this is where we can adjust our sounds. So right now I have the kick drum selected. You can select anything just by tapping on the drum. And now we can do things like adjust the tuning by pressing on that and then using the dial or the muffling. You won't use muffling that much because to be honest, 
uh, th these sounds really don't ring out all that much. Now the way this module approaches layering sounds is a tad weird. So let's say I want to have two kick drums playing at the same time to give the, the drum sound more weight. If I go over here to mix and then over here to layer and turn it on, now I've got virtual pad one playing at the exact same time as the primary sound. To adjust that sound, we go over back here to instrument, press on kick, and then we select virtual pad one. And unfortunately the screen is rebelling. Hey, I wanted to jump in here real quick and mention that I fixed the problem where I couldn't press that top left button on the screen. The way I fixed it was going into settings, screen calibration, and then I ran through pressing on the individual points around the screen to calibrate it. Once I did that, I could press on that, no problem. So now that I've selected virtual pad one, now I can assign a sound to it. It just defaults to nothing. So I can go through the kick drum list and then assign like the light sound, for example. I can tune it however I want and decide if I want this to be underneath the primary sound by adjusting the level of the sound with this toggle wheel right here. By the way, inside of that pad menu, if you decide to pin a sound, that means that no matter what drum you hit, it will always be editing that sound. So I'm gonna unpin that. Now let's go over here to mix. This is where you can do things like adjust the EQ. So we can adjust how much low end we've got with this and then adjust the frequency where that begins with this toggle wheel right here. The only other thing really is ambience. So I can have 20% ambience or crank that up if I want it to sound really, really big. And I have the panning option. Under kit, this is where you decide what virtual room you have the drum in and then you decide how much level that you have for the full kit. So the next thing I wanna talk about are the training games. This is stroke scope, and if we press play, we can see exactly how on or off the beat that we are. If it's a little bit to the left, I'm a little bit slow. If it's a little bit to the right, I'm playing a little bit too fast. And it can do that for the kick, snare, hi-hat, and ride cymbal. That's a cool game to really level up your accuracy. Next is called accuracy score. So my accuracy is 91%. The longer you play this game, the lower your accuracy tends to go. You'd be shocked at how hard it is to get anywhere near 100%. The next option is called Rhythm Box. It'll play a pre-programmed beat pattern, and you have a bunch of different ones to choose between, and that way you can hear how the drum set sounds in front of house, not just from the stage. Over here we've got set list, so if you have like your favorite two or three kits, you can have them all in the list of their own, so you don't have to scroll through all the different options because that takes freaking forever. And then we also have some different setting options. Let's go over here to audio pad. This drum module has multi-track audio over USB, micro USB for some reason. So you can adjust where each individual drum and cymbal goes. Over here in audio IO, this is where you can adjust the inputs and outputs. So here's some of the stuff that I like and don't like about the module. If you're the kind of person that just wants a natural sounding drum module that doesn't have a ton of different editing options to get lost in, this module might be one that is worth it for you. I also like the fact that the screen is a little bit larger than average for drum modules. Uh, it's about twice as large as something like a Roland or Elisis module screen. It also has multi-track audio over USB. I also like the fact that it does have five pin MIDI as well if you wanna go that route. It has the right and left outputs that you would expect. The module also comes with Bluetooth, and I believe it can do MIDI over Bluetooth as well, although not many people actually use that. Bluetooth is so convenient, every module on Earth should have it, but for some reason, it's not completely there yet in the eDrum industry. Because Bluetooth is so convenient, I never used the aux input. There are also little quality of life things, like giving you a cell phone or drumstick tray underneath the module, that's a nice handy touch. And while the module is definitely going for that minimalist mentality, it's trying to just you know fade into the background so you don't think about it, 
it still doesn't go all the way into that direction like the ATV 85. In this module, they at least give you two band EQ on the drums. You do have some ambience options. You do have some layering potential, although it's just not that extreme. All right, so that's definitely some of the stuff that I liked about the module, but you can still tell that this is basically F Note's first module because it's missing a lot of stuff drum sets in the $3,500 price point should have. Now, the first thing that's missing for me is at least a global compression setting. You don't necessarily have to do compression on the kick and snare in every single individual element, but there should be global compression to make the sound more glued together and a little bit more aggressive. I would also expect a drum set in this price bracket to come with sample import on the module, but unfortunately that's not a feature either. Now one strange limitation of this module is the fact that you can't route the click to go only through your headphone jack. It also has to go through the main bus as well. In fact, every single thing, even Bluetooth, has to go through the main bus too. This is kind of a problem if you play live or even if you want to record with a click, but you don't want the audience to hear the click. I decided to contact the company to see if there was a workaround, and indeed there is. First, you have to go to the settings menu, and then under audio pad, you'll want to make sure all the drums and cymbals, every single one of them, is routed to channels one and two. Next, you'll want to go to audio IO. You'll set the click to main. You'll set line out to channels one and two and you'll set the output of your headphones to the main. So now you're hearing a click and the audience isn't hearing a click. But the big trade-off is that now the audience, if you're playing live, can't hear the ambience of the drums. This is a dry feed. None of the virtual rooms or anything like that is in the signal for some reason. So you'll wanna make sure the front of house puts some sort of reverb on your drum signal to make it sound a little bit more natural. If you play in really large rooms, you won't want ambience anyway, because I've done this with a Roland TD-30. You have too much ambience that sounds good in headphones, but in a big room, it sounds very, very muddy. So it depends on the situation. But you know what? None of this routing nonsense would be necessary anyway if they only allowed you to have a switch that sends the metronome only to go to your headphones. And then finally, the screen is definitely the worst in the entire electronic drum industry. It, this is the type of older style screen where you have to press hard in order to get the layers of the screen to make contact. You can't just rest your finger on it and expect it to trigger that button. All right, so taken as a whole, is this drum set worth buying? Yes, it's a very good drum set that is worth buying, but it's not worth buying for every single person out there. It kind of depends on what you need your electronic drum set to do, if this is a good recommendation or not. If you like to use drum software, you wanna have nice drum sizes, and you don't wanna to spend too much money, this is definitely a good drum set that is worth picking up. Another person that might benefit from buying this drum set is someone who doesn't play really aggressive music. I know it's a really broad category, but anything that has sort of a slight funk edge to it, more classic rock type thing, anything that isn't really aggressive, really, really modern, attack heavy drums. This kit might be worth it for you because the built-in sounds are geared towards that. Meanwhile, if you're the type of person that really loves to dig into the settings of the module, you wanna adjust things like this, snare, strainer, resonance, and you wanna adjust shell depth, well, maybe the TD27KV is a better drum set for you in that particular case. And if you don't like the sounds built in, then this drum set also will not be for you. But taken as a whole, F-Note has done an excellent job with this drum set. And that's the video, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I really, really do appreciate it. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you all in a few.